I'm here today with the amazing, incomparable Milton Packer, who's produced a remarkable, remarkable historical review for the inaugural issue under my editorship of Jack. And I'm here with him today, and we're going to talk just a little bit about this piece. And first and foremost, Milton, welcome. Thank you for the contribution. Uh, th I'm delighted. Uh, this was a real joy. So let's just get to it because we just want to give people a taste and I hope they'll go back to the piece and, and enjoy the, the contribution that you've made. So look, you've taken a broad view of cardiovascular history. Can you give us say five points of, of historical interest that you touch on in this paper that people might be interested in? Well, it's really amazing. Uh, I'm going to just focus on the discovery of the circulatory system. So uh, in order to do that, we have to go back 2,500 years uh, because most physicians don't realize that there are two fathers of cardiology. Uh, one is Hippocrates, which, uh, who originated the concept of medical medicine as a discipline, but focused on professionalism. But the second father of cardiology is Aristotle, who focused on science. The, the concept of rational thinking and decision-making. Um, and it's really interesting because those two fathers percolated during history. Uh, Hippocrates was the major focus primarily because of a physician named Galen, who was a, a, the prominent physician in the second century. And uh, Galen had thought that were dominant because they were supported by the early Christian church. Uh, Galen thought that the circulation had two separate systems, the arterial system and the venous system. They really didn't connect at all. Blood was synthesized in the liver and uh, the venous system pumped it out to all the organs and the blood was aerated through pores in the ventricular septum. That was the Galenic uh, system, and that dominated medical thought for a thousand years. Uh, and it almost all other thought against Galen was suppressed, uh, primarily uh, through ecclesiastical authority. Uh, ha Aristotle, however, survived primarily because Aristotle was imported into North Africa during the Islamic Golden Age. And during that time, many prominent Islamic physicians uh, made major contributions to medicine, all opposed to Galen. And uh, the uh, most remarkable was Avicenna, who said that Galen was wrong uh, there was a, another uh, major Islamic physician who discovered the pulmonary circulation that someone named Al-Nafis, uh, whose work was not actually recognized for 700 years. Uh, the most amazing thing is that uh, for about five, 600 years, Galen was dominant in Europe. Aristotle was dominant in North Africa and uh, in, in the Near East. And uh, the only reason that Aristotle got introduced back into Europe was because of a school of translators that were uh, located and centered in Toledo, who took all of the Islamic work that preserved Aristotle introduced it back into Europe in the 12th century and uh, opposed by the Christian church. And it survived only at one place, which was the University of Padua. Uh, University of Padua became this mecca for rebellious thinkers uh, from all over. Uh, it was a jewel of intellectual thought, first founded in the 13th century. And uh, almost all of the advances that we know about in the circulation came from this one university. Uh, amazing people like Vesalius, Servetus, Columbo, uh, Fabricius, but most importantly, 
William Harvey, who was a student at the University of Padua, spent years there, went back to England, and then proposed a concept of a complete closed loop of the circulatory system, even though he didn't know about capillaries in the tissues that would connect the arterial system to the venous system. Uh, what's amazing is that almost all of this rebellious thought, and particularly the work of Harvey, which was a genius, he synthesized uh, experimental data frameworks into a, a new way of thinking, uh, almost everyone opposed him. For 50 years, he suffered under the most uh, uh, incredibly vigorous criticism, waves and waves of criticism that were highly personal. And uh, finally, just a few years before his death, his theory was accepted because capillaries were discovered and it was uh, an, an amazing uh, achievement. So my, it, it, it just, we, we have so much to owe to those who came before us. And we, we have so many lessons that we can learn from this history. It's, a, it's, it's remarkable. You're, just that taste should drive everyone to go back to the paper. Milton, you're a treasure. Thank you for contributing this piece. So great to have it in the first issue. And, and thanks for sharing your thoughts. Thank you so much, Harlan. Thank you.